So do you think that, like, you said before that the helmets are becoming more a part of their body than they were before, or were they always like that? They're, they're always supposed like to be that. like that, but now they're finally growing into that, like, idea, <laughs> I guess. Before they looked like they were separate, and now they're like... Yeah, becoming like more of an extension of their skull, like, their armor. Do you think that they have like these helmets to like protect their blindness somehow? Their eyes? Or? Mm, it's more like a display thing, I think. It's more like a, you know, not so much a survival thing, more like a showing off kind of thing, mating and. <laughs> Even though they can't see them. They can feel them, I guess. They can feel them. Like their wings, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it makes Their beaks? It's a little delay. So, like, what part of the apocalypse do they start evolving with, like, the reptilian qualities? Like, further along? Like, man is totally gone? Yeah, for sure. I mean, then they're just, they're almost, like, reverting, because, you know birds still carry the the ability to have scales, tails, and teeth. They just lose it when they uh, when they finally are hatched or whatever now. But, oh, yeah. and so they have like the genetic? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all in there still. Um, but yeah, at this point they kind of have to get tougher. So. Does that mean that they can swim too underwater i suppose i guess i haven't really thought about that the water levels are super high so like in this specific drawing right well now. in this specific drawing but just in general because that's how it uh it's part of the warming process <laughs> glacier melts so as far as like what you're doing now, like this one, this is kind of like a study from like a while ago, right? Yeah, that one's about almost two years old, I think. And then you worked on this drawing. Yep. Recently. Yeah. And then you enlarge it mm -hmm. by a photocopy and then transfer that. Yep. Kind of outline onto. Yeah. And then you're working on like the final drawing. Yeah, yeah, final study for the bird anyway. A lot of it'll stay on that one for the painting study, but I feel like this is a better composition for the drawing. Too many drawings. <laughs> or not. Enough. Do you think that like drawing it a few times kind of helps you hone in when you're like doing the final? Oh yeah, for sure, because I mean, from that to that, it's like late years, to me anyway, just me and Sue. I'm so glad I waited and redid it, so by the time I get to the paint, it's going to be like, I don't know, hopefully another step. Mm, and you, positive, right? you kind of always work this way, right? You always do like this. Yeah. Yep, especially given time. <laughs> <laughs> Fine with that. So, it's a frigate bird that's been evolved. Is that native to like the Midwest or? No, no, it's a seabird. It's a seabird? Yeah. So, that's another thing. It's on, perched on this cupola, which is part of a barn, so. It's out of its normal. Yeah, or at least, yeah, it's habitat that we're used to seeing them in. But it makes sense. It's either a huge lake or part of an inland sea you now. So. Right.
usually not that big in real life or like in right. our world. Yeah, they're pretty big. They're like not like albatross, but they're similar. They're built similarly. They're big birds, but not like this. So I guess what I kind of find interesting about this particular piece is that it feels like it's a lot higher off the ground than other pieces of yours, but yet there's still kind of like that map string going on. Yeah. Yeah, I think this one up here you can kind of see it. There's going to be all these arrows stuck into the roof. And they all have strings going into the water too. The water line's gonna be right along there. So this is just the very top of the barn roof that's kind of floating out out to sea. But these strings are still attached to something, as are these for the most part. So even though these guys are floating on this raft, they're still attached somehow to some kind of land. Is this string like a um, man-made string, like sewing string, like we think about it, or is it kind of more of like this thing that they've developed in their bodies, like in the snare when we were talking about that? Oh yeah, it's like a combination of found string and woven string, like like weaver birds that make their nests now, similar to that, like. It's made out of fibers that are found in nature and all the cast off debris of the world as it was. And then they just kind of have attached it to things mm -hmm. as they see fit to make their way around. Yep, yeah, some maps. <laughs> <laughs> when did you like first start thinking about this world? Like when do you think it first started showing up in your work? Uh, it just started happening organically as I worked on various projects and put the stuff, same themes in a lot of them, I'll keep the common threads going, so to speak. Uh, probably coming up on 10 years of this particular storyline, and it's just evolved into multiple storylines and narratives. I love how you always hide your like little maker's mark in things. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> like a, uh, looks like a old cook stove vent or something to me. But... I mean, I just like love how beautiful this, this iron work is and stuff. I'm guessing iron work would be iron or mm, tin. tin. Yeah, it's like a like cupolas are usually pretty boring. They're just like, I mean, some of them are decorative, but this one I wanted to go kind of nuts on and just really make it otherworldly, as if you know somebody really had the time to spend on this thing. Like we used to. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, or how I would like to see it, I guess. This is just something I'd love to see someday. In the wild. <laughs> but, probably won't. I wish, like, craftsmanship was more like how it used to be. Oh, I agree. I think it's coming back a little bit anyway. Just gotta look for it. I mean, I kind of feel like that's what you do. Like, you have such attention to detail and like craftsmanship. Thanks. Yeah, I, I definitely from that school. I, mean, I grew up being taught to appreciate that. Not even taught, just being around it. Like, with your dad? Yeah, my dad, my grandpa, most of my uncles are all craftsmen, so yo. And this like cupola 
is based on something that's in Wyndham where you're from originally. Yeah, yeah, the, re the reference photo for it is, uh, was hanging up in the, the historical society down in Wyndham and I'm not sure where exactly it is, but somewhere in the neighboring counties or county. Um, but yeah, the, you can see these examples of these cupolas. If you're looking in quite a few places, just, even on modern barns, they still, they still do them, but they're really ugly now. So. Why do you think that's important for you to reference you know, the Midwest in Minnesota? Uh, like, do you notice you're doing it, or is it just because this is what you're around? Yeah, I mean, I draw what I know, but at the same time, I feel like it's a pretty overlooked, at least in this, you know, I don't know, I won't say genre, but this field that I'm working in, kind of, that's, you know, mostly based on the coasts or cities, so I feel like this is almost like a weird unknown foreign thing to most people at this point. It's, it's farm equipment. And... That's definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so maybe it's uh, somehow come full circle. It's like this weird, exciting thing again. Well, I don't know about exciting, but I get excited about it. Do you think that, like, at the start of your apocalypse, people would have more of a chance for survival out here? Because it's so rural? Or yeah, did everyone I, just get, like, decimated at once? Yeah, I guess I haven't really developed that part of it. Like, I don't know how it all happened. I think it just happened. And I don't even know if it was, like, a immediate thing or a slow unraveling. It was, like... I mean, I assume that if it is happening, even if it's happening right now, we're not going to know it until the end. You know, nobody's going to be able to put those pieces together because nobody will be around anymore but like it's more important to you what's happening to wildlife and... right yeah and the decay of the things left behind by man right yeah exactly yeah the whole you know man is just a blip on this in this story you know, they're very they're just here to kind of build these things that these animals are using now <laughs> to survive, or at least partially. So. I know that, like, Mitch and Jenny and I were talking about it, like, that one night you were sleeping. Mm -hmm. We were, like, discussing, like, our chances of survival in <laughs> the apocalypse. Like, Mitch was like, I'm gonna go first. Right. In, like, the first wave. And I was like, <laughs> mm, I definitely think I'd survive, like, the first wave, but I don't think I'd survive, like, the second wave. You know. Right, the long term. Right, long like unless term. I like somehow managed to find Jeremy Hush and like <laughs> <laughs> had him take me under his protection. You know? yeah. I was in Philly anyway. <laughs> so like, what were you thinking about? You? Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I mean, I assume if, if shit's going down, I'm gonna be I'll be out here. And, uh, well, not even out here, uh, further out in the country, like where my folks live and stuff. So, I feel like there's a better chance of. Like, if the zombie apocalypse happens as, as soon as you have a long time of zombies to get all the way out there. Right. It's, it's like some sort of biological warfare. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah the biological. <laughs> right. Exactly. I think if, yeah, if it's biological warfare, I think everybody's gonna be cooked, even if it's not immediate. It's going to take a little longer for people out in the cut to get affected by it, but it's going to come and people are going to come looking and it's going to get ugly. So, if it happens. Maybe we'll pull our shit together. Um, someone just asked about Jeremy surviving the apocalypse. Um, Jeremy is like an <laughs> Eagle Scout and... Yeah, he's got that. He knows all sorts of stuff, like is growing on the tree this way so that means we're facing this way and <laughs> can tie all sorts of knots and shoot all sorts of weapons <laughs> yep. and find his way around the, the wilderness totally. so yeah 
<laughs> I think he would know how to survive. <laughs> the apocalypse. He also like um, can eat anything and not be affected. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that dude could live off of cans of uh, expired. I don't know. <laughs> spam and, and be be just as happy with his food choices as he is now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the only thing you have to worry about is like growing some hair to like keep himself warm. To, like, <laughs> survive in the winter out there. Or wear a hat, I guess. So what do you think like changed in like this drawing from a few years ago? Like this tail looks way longer and the helmet looks a little bit more or ornate. And he looks just, or she looks a little bit smaller. Yeah, it's just not as, I don't know, it's just not as dynamic. It's just like a, this is just an initial idea for it. I'm, like I said, I'm glad I waited on it and held off. I mean, there's lots of like, just those south and north letters on the wind. Or in the weather vane, or like, just that's how they are in real life. Like, I want to change everything I could to like just extrapolate the lines as much as possible. So, like this little bird that's on this weather vane, mm. is it a threat to this bigger bird since it's sharing the map string? Or mm, he's on his own line actually. He's got like a just like a, he's just out there too. Uh, initially, I was gonna have uh, like a, some kind of food stores kind of built up around around the cupola and the shade area and stuff I'm not sure if that's gonna go in there I, I am gonna add vegetation growing on them. like kind of like yeah like those black eyed Susans are growing there I'm gonna have like way more stuff um, built up around it out here. yeah and it'll be all kind of regional plants and stuff to make it even more um, Midwestern Believable, art. right? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So I guess the other thing that was like really interesting to me, um, like I know that we talked earlier about you drawing the fox in something else, but like since I've yeah. known you, I've never seen you do it. Yeah, yeah. It's... Like this sort of wildlife. Mm -hmm. Like mammals. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't explored them as much in this world. They show up occasionally, it's mostly birds and insects and I, I don't know if that's necessarily intentional or not um, I, I love mammals but I don't know I do they like, not survive as well as yeah I feel like they're not as um, yeah like they're not as hardy or something or they're able to like well insects obviously are gonna outlast everything but uh, flies yeah flies <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff will be underground. I think it'll, yeah. So I mean, smaller mammals. I mean, I, you know, it could be like an extinction event in, you know, in prehistory that the smaller creatures are the ones that are going to survive. The ones that are more that don't take, you know, they don't have to build up as as much body fat or anything to survive. They can just keep keep moving. So you think? There's no bears left then. No, maybe there's bears, but maybe they're just smaller now. Like they evolved to be. Yeah, like pygmy mammoths, like that kind of a thing. Like uh, maybe some got trapped on an island somewhere and they just didn't get very big anymore. Like pigs. <laughs> That's another part of the graphic novel that we'll, we'll have to dig into at <laughs> some point. When's that happen? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> I figure my kids will be all graduated when I'm about 50, so. <laughs> as long as my. Uh... That's when, when the kids are all out of high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when if, if my uh, hands and eyes last that long, I'll get to that next. <laughs> These are all just panels for a graphic novel. This is like the longest running graphic novel. Like for real or just? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It could you be. You sound real serious and I'm uh, I might wind up on some forum or something. So. <laughs> sure.
<laughs> no, no. I mean, it, I've definitely toyed with the idea of doing some little, like, self-contained stories just based off certain prints and images and stuff. I'd still love to do that. Me too. <laughs> you can help write that. <laughs> You're a good writer on your own. You know what I mean? I just like look at this little guy. What kind of fox is this? Mm, it's like a. It's these desert foxes that have these big ears. Yeah, what are those things uh, called? Like fennec foxes? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Oh, and they have big ears so they can, they can cool off, I think, is what the thing is. Um, but yeah, this one, and then the tail got a lot bigger on this one, obviously. And they're stripey. Yeah. And this drawing's for Mondo Hanjo coming up, right? Uh, yeah, it's just the Mondo Gallery. We're having a show. Just, just art for art's sake, no like pop culture stuff, which is nice and refreshing in this day and age. Uh, so yeah, it'll be fun. Everything looks really good for the show so far, so I'm excited to check it out. How does it feel now to be like working on exclusively your world and not having to fit it into something that's gonna have like a movie name or a band name on it. Oh, it's pretty nice. It yeah, it's well it's it's pretty yeah, yeah, I mean I pretty much have just been using all that. I mean, with the exception of the movie stuff, because that has to kinda stay within a certain image image library, I guess, to be recognizable as you know, something that's visual already has like its visual visuals to it so but the music posters i've been able to kind of build my own world within that you know just have a name on it um but this it feels nice to like just not only take the time to do this and then kind of build these little paintings and stuff but just to yeah i don't know when i don't have a crazy deadline it's it's nice to like do this where i have Two years in between them, I can fix all the you know, crap that I don't like about the first one, I guess. But where do you stop, you know? I don't want to spend another two years on this, and I know I know someone else that doesn't want me to do that either, so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. But to answer your question, yeah, it's great. It's, it's really nice to take a break and do that. I miss... I miss doing posters, but there's a few of those coming up, so we'll get back to that at some point. Not as much, but a little bit. Stop creeping on you, and hopefully, I can figure out how to turn this thing off. Maybe Jenny does it for me. <laughs> Jenny, where are you? I know. <laughs> Just watching. Oh, I got it. it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 